come with us now, if you dare, down a rickety staircase into a dank, dark basement. What awaits the Saturday Night Freak Show? (laughs) Hello, and thanks for listening to the Saturday Night Freak Show podcast. We're a movie review podcast, and we come at you every Saturday. You'll find a new episode. This is like 223, I think. Did Damn. you look? I think I looked. Yeah. 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 I think we, I looked, but we, now I'm not entirely sure. <laughs> since we missed celebrating our, our, I don't know. our 200th, now we're keeping track. Yeah. <laughs> Wait till we get to 300. <laughs> Only 80 yeah. odd more episodes, or 70 odd more episodes to go. We'll get there. We'll get there. We've got an amazing back catalog. We li- would like for you to check them out. Why not? You can find us on iTunes, Stitcher Radio, Google Play, YouTube, Cast Roller. You keep bringing that you up. Keep bringing Do you that listen up. to us on Cast Roller? <laughs> no, that's why I keep bringing it up. I've never heard of this before. I can't imagine why anybody would listen to anything on Cast Roller. No offense to you, Cast Roller people, but why? Pod Bay. I think we're on Pod Bay too. Yeah, I listen. That's the one I used for a long time. We're syndicated all over the world. The internationally renowned show program, the Saturday Night Freak Show, on podcast. right after Harry and Ellen. <laughs> And uh, so what we do is uh, we choose movies. There's four of us, and we pick them round robin every week. We don't know what we're going to watch until you know the end of tonight. Sometimes we're going to find out what. Not till the day of. <laughs> it's happened. Sometimes not till the moment of. Yeah. Sean. Like, huh? Yeah. What should we watch? Sean. Sometimes we got to take a break and figure it out. <laughs> You'll never know. Sean's yeah. an infamous. Oh, is it my pick? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Is it for me? <laughs> oh. It's always good to be prepared. Uh, so yeah. who are the internet radio superstars? Holly, Michaela, Sean. And I'm Colin. And tonight we watched the movie that was chosen by... John! <laughs> <laughs> Me! <laughs> and what did we watch tonight, We Sean? watched John Carpenter's Escape from L.A. from 1996. Why'd you God pick bless it. Escape from L.A. and not Escape from New York? Two reasons. One, Escape from L.A. was the first one I saw, and it's the one I grew up watching. It played on HBO all the time. So I, whether I wanted to or not, it was there to watch. Number two... I don't like Escape from New York that much. <laughs> now, I now I just offended Colin. Now, really, this should not come as a shock because Sean is pretty famous for being Sean of sequels. I will. I, I like sequel my sequels. Yeah. yeah. I, I want to explore them. I want to know why. Like, why? I want to know why. Yeah. In the world of sequels, nobody ever like they pay less attention to the sequels. I think. And I but kind sometimes of, that's for a good reason. Well, sometimes, well, sometimes it's for a good reason. Yeah. Sometimes it's not. They're sometimes historically you, more expensive to make and make less money. Yes, usually. Not anymore, right? Now it's like you you build all the sets for the first one, and then you pump all your money sets, into that. You're assuming they build sets for movies now? <laughs> they didn't even build sets for this movie. <laughs> Green screen sets? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. All your R&D. That. All your, your, no model, your virtual why sets. Robert Rodriguez is doing the remake. Because yeah. he saw this movie, and it's like, I can do that better. <laughs> Well, Robert Rodriguez, yeah, it was announced recently that he's going to be helming the Escape from New York remake. Oh, and I mean, I remember his fascination with this movie. I think, you know, he or he the first saw one, the or first one, one, the first one was that he saw that when he was a kid and was became obsessed with it so much so that, you know, I remember in El Mariachi, he had his mariachi carrying the Mac 10 because the Mac 10 was the the weapon of Snake Plissken in the first one. Yes, it was. So he's got like a long history with it and hopefully he will do well. As long as uh, what's his name's not attached to it. Who was uh, uh, what's who was the actor attached to it before it was Robert Gerard was? Butler? Gerard Butler was Timothy mm-hmm. Oliphant. Yeah, and yeah. Been a number of people. I could see. I could, see Tim- I could definitely I could see. see I could, Does he yeah. have long hair? He he did. On, he uh, he has for a while. He did. And he did a few movies where he had longer hair. Yeah. Does he, he have to, right. does he have to look just like Kurt Russell in order to do justice to no. its own entity? Yeah, you yeah. can't yeah. duplicate yeah. that. Yeah. And I was watching this movie, I was like, I wish I had that hair. And I'm like, even if I did have that hair, I couldn't yeah. pull it off. I don't have like the facial structure no, of Kurt you, Russell. Yeah. No, you don't have to that do it. square face. I, no, he's that, got that, that matches. It's that beautiful that, square that face. Yeah. Do you think his hair is insured? I don't think he's that. I don't think he's that. uh, I mean, celebrities. I mean, have you seen? Yeah, and have you seen pictures of him from the new Guardians? Like, yeah, it's it's back. It's it is back. Like he got pretty again. (laughs) God damn it, Carousel. He's growing it back out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, I'm kind of curious, Sean. I mean, I'm assuming that most of our audience is familiar with probably both of these movies, Mm -hmm. or at least who Snake Plissken is. I would say so. Although, this was an interesting thing at the time. I remember when this movie came out, like, the posters all said, Snake is back. Big letters on top of it. And I was sitting there as a lifelong fan of Escape from New York going, Mm -hmm. like, 
does anybody in 1996 like know who the fuck this is? You know, I mean, yeah. like <laughs> yeah. mainstream cinema. Because that's a while later. That's a big time gap right? between the first movie and yeah, this one. The first one was what 81? 81. Yeah, yeah. That's a big time gap. Oh, I want to ask you guys, or at least Colin, why do you like Escape from New York? What what what? Why was that a big fascination for you guys? I mean, I can see why if you're younger, kind of the liking for it. But I, I've only seen Escape from New York later on in life as I've been older. Never watched it as this, a kid. You saw L.A. first, and I saw L.A. Yeah. first, and as a kid. And, and I think that probably has a lot to do with it. And see, me as a kid, I watched it as a kid, and I have not seen it as an adult. Escape from New York. In New York. So, like watching this, I didn't remember anything from mm. Escape from New York. So that's okay. Clearly, it didn't stick with me. I mean, granted, I was a little girl, but sure. S- but still, like some things did. Like Caddyshack was my favorite movie, you know, like mm. as a five-year-old girl. So I can't say I was typical. But it never stuck with me. So why did it stick with you, Colin? I think Escape from New York was my Caddyshack. I don't know. There was something. <laughs> That's the know. oddest thing. Uh, I mean, One of the oddest oh, things you may have said on this I've owned this <laughs> movie in like. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This is my Caddyshack. <laughs> <laughs> I've owned Escape from New York, I think, in every single video format that it's come out. As did you, you get the special edition you, when it came it, out? On the, oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. On the wall. Or not. Sorry. I haven't got the Scream Factory one. I got the oh, you on Blu-ray. So, yeah. Okay. So Scream Factory. But I had it on Blu-ray. Yeah. Or I have it on Blu-ray, nice, yeah. but I got the the Snake Plissken uh, action figures. They're mounted on yep. the wall behind you. The Snake Plisk or the Escape from New York posters signed by John Carpenter. When I met him, that was the one that I brought. Why, why was it that that's one? A hard I mean, that's choice to make. Yeah, yeah that's, that is that's a hard a lot. choice to make. Did that's you? A... I mean, also depends on what you had at the time. Like, well, yeah, if you yeah. had a thing poster or anything, I like didn't. That. So it was right. the one that so I had. Okay. But that was the one that I chose to purchase because right. I think of all. And I was thinking about this tonight while I was watching this movie. I think of all movie characters ever, mm. I want to be Snake Plissken. Ever. I've always wanted to. <laughs> ever he wants yeah, to I be think Snake so. Plissken. I think that's, yeah. And because I think at the time that I saw it, I was probably, you know, like 10 to 12 years old. And he was just the baddest motherfucker. <laughs> My God, because he just wants you to leave him the fuck alone. <laughs> right? right? That is his whole thing. It's what like, does he do when off? he's I not being I know. recruited for jobs? I know. Like, what does Snake Plissken do? <laughs> it's got to be the most boring life. Well, they yeah. say in this movie that he's he a gunfighter, but it's a little retro, you know, fitting. Right. Trying to make him into a Western hero. Mm-hmm. Because I think, you know, famously, uh, John Carpenter wanted um, Kurt Russell to kind of emulate... Um, uh, Clint Eastwood mm-hmm. in his performance. It showed. Yeah. <laughs> because in the first one, he goes so far as to pair uh, Kurt Russell up with Lee Van Cleef, who is mm-hmm. famously in, you know, a bunch of Sergio Leone yeah, Westerns right. with, you know, Good, Bad, and the yeah. Ugly with uh, Clint Eastwood. Mm-hmm. So there well, was and that. Kurt Russell says all of, like 200 words in this movie. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it doesn't say lies. It's attitude, yeah. right? <laughs> and he's got that, yeah. that Clint Eastwood. <sighs> yeah, yeah. 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 I don't about give a teeth. fuck yeah. about you yeah. <laughs> or your president. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Call Snake Plissken is a bad motherfucker. And the whole idea of like in the first one anyway of like, you know, that they would make Manhattan into a maximum security penitentiary mm-hmm. didn't seem that far fetched at the time. This sure. is before the Giuliani <laughs> right. cleanup. You know, it's like this is dirty, right. nasty yeah. New yeah. York. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I was like, that's just a wall it off. <laughs> yeah, this is, well, this is a lost cause. <laughs> yeah, just get rid of that. And- yeah, so I'm curious, you know, like, uh, you know, I, I mean, I real I recognize now that Escape from New York, you know, has a lot of um, the seams <laughs> show yeah, in the movie. I mean, I still think it's a goddamn classic, but I appreciate the fact that, you know, like a younger audience probably would go into it going like, eh, some of the, you know, there's supposed to be a crowd here and there isn't. Yeah. Uh, you the know. seams, the seams of Escape from New York don't bother me. What I mean, and you guys cringe at the CG in this movie, but it's not great. I mean, that is 1981, but it's not great in that movie either. In Escape from New York, some of that's pretty bad. But um, Jim Jim Cameron doing special effects, oh, matte paintings and stuff like that yeah. for that. Yeah. Oh, the matte paintings, yes. Yeah. Uh, they're not so much better in this movie. So they're <laughs> ten times worse. They're, aren't they? they are. I mean, they're like, just they're bad. The experimentation with. Computer graphics, like the company that did this for this movie, had never done it before. Yeah, no idea. What Buena Vista. Who was yeah. it? Yeah, did you look it up? Buena Vista. Buena Vista did their own. These are like PlayStation One. They are so graphics. much. Even N64. Yeah, yeah, it depends yeah. on how blocky the scene yeah. got. No, some of the scenery to me was very like Cool World esque. It was so animated, mm-hmm. like for real. Little, right, because you can see in you can see the composites of mm-hmm. how yeah. they're putting like there's the street that really exists, but then these shitty 
um, every, uh, well, it's shitty like buildings. Man, it's like a CG right. map. Yeah, it's just, yeah. just added in there and you can see it. And this is where you can really see the seams of this movie. Mm-hmm. I couldn't see it so much because they are in like fucking dirty, disgusting New York in the first one where it's just like, that's it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Nothing to dress up. But in this, they're trying to make LA look like a shithole. Yeah. And it's just, yeah, you can see just the lines of everything. And yeah, it's well, not Well, the great. first one, they got lucky. They were able to shoot in uh, famously, I think, uh, St. Louis had oh, yeah? a fire that in like 79 or 78, 79, something like that. And they had closed down like a portion of the downtown. So they actually shot in, you know. So they were able to, like, you know, basically nice. take over the city, turn off lights. Sorry and, to know. all you St. Louisans oh, no, who lost today, your St. homes Louis and everything. Still gross and dirty in certain parts, like still recovering oh, from the fire. It, I mean, there's parts <laughs> of St. Louis that like look like you could be in Detroit. Yeah, like you yeah. know, mm. it's like you know how like every horror movie now is filmed on that same street in Detroit. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. there's streets uh-huh. like in St. Louis like uh-huh. that. You know, so yeah. it's, it's still yeah. like that today. Like Gary, Indiana. Yes, like Gary, Indiana. <laughs> Dude, I, is Gary, no. Indiana, famous for being oh, God, uh, not no, good? No, it's, it's bad. I I was coming home from Michigan. Why I was Gary? driving through Chicago and I got <laughs> lost. And I was like, oh my god, I'm in Gary. Yep. Oh my god, it was yep. so Gary scary. Oh no. I was driving by myself and I stopped in Gary, Indiana for gas and the gas station I stopped at when I went inside to pay the potato chips were in like a like a barred off yeah. box that was mm. locked like on chips. the counter yeah. and I was like I need to get the like, fuck out of here <laughs> as soon as I can dude, as soon as you roll into town you just know where you, you are dude you wrong. just know and uh, of Michael Jackson. Oh, uh, <laughs> they're, they're one. And, they're one and only claim to fame. Yep, basically. Yeah, basically. Been better if they were some off-brand snacks that they yeah. just barred up. I ran yeah. into a snack the other day. This is completely off topic. It was called. They're called wrap snacks. What? R A P. R A P. With like. What are they? Rappers on the front. <laughs> Shut up! I kid you not. Like, like they're, called, they're called. They're called wrap snacks and hip hop. Like hip hop. Yep. On the front, rap snacks. Rap snacks. Did they have big gold chains? And- I mean, they did. Yes, that's just and different. Oh, it was fantastic. What like, year is it? Where the hell yeah. am I? Rap snacks. Where like, did well, you I see I these? At like played, a gas station? Your odds. It's in something fucking mobile on uh, North Main. <laughs> what? Yeah, it's like right down the street. <laughs> yeah. Craziness. If you ever are driving through Indiana, just go around Gary. It's, oh God! If it takes you longer, just do it's it. terrifying. <laughs> so you should up. wall that off and yeah, make right. it no, into mo- a maximum no, most security are, Most things are boarded up anyway. Yeah, but, exactly. Yeah, but you should just or go it, quickly. Yeah, there's yeah. bars over it. Go, go quickly. Bars over everything. In Gary. It's terrifying. Wasn't there an adventure show called Gary Indiana? All right. Well, okay. Gary the people Indiana. are here listening for an <laughs> Escape from LA podcast. They will so, get it. So we will the question, get there. Uh, incidentally, they also got uh, uh, lucky this time because there was an earthquake in Los Angeles. So mm-hmm. most of those, when they're driving down the street and there's right. all those houses, is because the earthquake had hit. So you saw Escape from LA I first. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, I guess then what was your experience watching Escape from New York when you went back after this one, after loving this one so much on HBO? After going, Escape from New York seemed... I and I only have like LA to compare it to, but it's it's very uh, it doesn't it's there's not as much character like big bombastic characters as there are in this one, which I think I a I liked more as a kid, b I like more now. It's it's kind of like not a lot happens, and I mean it is kind of dated in that. I mean at the end of the movie, and spoiler for everybody, he unravels a cassette tape and you know walks off into nothing, and like that's the big thing they're after the the president and the cassette tape. Um, I well, don't, he fucks. That's the thing. He fucks over the United States at the end, which is not dealt with in this one at all. No, right? no, not at all. <laughs> but because that basically plunges the world into war, I believe that's that, that what it yeah, happens. To, like, was, I know it's a peace summit that they're going to. Yeah, but the president is going to the peace summit to say, like, look, we've developed this fusion thing, and we're gonna. You know, if you don't st- step off, we're gonna blow you your shit up. Right. And I only have this. I only have this tape to explain it yeah. to you. And yeah. if I don't have this. <laughs> <laughs> that that's it. Like everything relies on this tape. We yeah, don't have some paperwork hours. he can read off of mm. to yeah. explain that we have this fusion system. Yeah, it's got to come off the cassette tape or everything's fucked. He like that's like a, he doesn't have like a dream journal that he started something, on. Something, <laughs> anything. Like there's nothing else that's gonna help them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They don't have the scientist who like came up with who's on and the tape. Anything <laughs> else? Yeah. This tape is the key to this. That bothered me. That I didn't think was a strong. Maybe it was strong back then, but I didn't think it was a strong plot point. None of the other characters in that movie are very, uh, I, they're not as uh, You're developed as... You're speaking heresy here, Sean. <sighs> this is, you got the you Duke, get the Duke of New York, A yeah. number one. 
the very British <laughs> the, president of the very United British States. president of the United States, which they do get Donald Pleasance to yell in this movie, which is the best part. Yeah. It's like you know, the Duke of New York, a <laughs> number one. The way he yells and it's wonderful. Oh, it's fantastic. And he does get to blow him away at the end, which mm-hmm. is great. I'm just like, whoa, Cathartic. Donald Pleasance is like kicking ass here. Yeah. Why he had to stop Snake, I don't know. Yeah. Just like hang him in there as bait. But. Brain and Maggie and Cabbie, like, I don't know what the... Okay, you so just anyway, like Adrian so, Barbeau, and well, that's yeah. clouding your vision of that movie, I think. Because she's also Maybe rightfully so. in that movie. Is she? What does she do? What, what, can, what, do, what does she as, do? As, like, Brain's right-hand man, she's, like, the one who's got comes up with the plan. Like, he's supposedly the guy who's got all the... Well, okay, so this movie... <laughs> no, I don't know. We got, we, I think we have we got to talk about both of them. You can... Uh, we have time. I haven't seen the first one, guys. I mean, I, I did a long time ago, but sure. as far as I'm concerned, I haven't seen it, because I don't remember Well, you kind of have, because you sat through Escape from L.A., yeah. which is okay. very true. Yeah, Basic yeah. plot points are yeah. repeated, yeah. to say Lots the least. I kind of picked yeah. up on that i yeah. mean just you know but if it worked the first time hey why reinvent why? the wheel if it's Pre- not broke you yeah. know yeah tell him he's gonna die unless he helps <laughs> us and there you go it worked once let's do it again i have questions about this uh, we were bringing this up during the actual movie but in the first movie mm-hmm. he's sent in to rescue the president of the united states who's gone down in the maximum security penitentiary yes. of new york in this one he has to save well, ostensibly the president's daughter, but he's yes. really after a black box, the, mm-hmm. the tape, I guess. Uh, for, uh, the, the tape of this one, yes. Uh, from L.A., which has had an earthquake hit it. Now it's out in the middle of uh, the ocean, right? Yeah. That's right. where America sends all of its undesirables. It's so America's Australia. Yes, it's, yeah. it is. Yes, yeah. <laughs> we mentioned that earlier. It was like yeah. this is like Australia, yeah. right? Yeah. Basically, all yes. the basically. criminals, quote unquote. Yes, but, but the <laughs> island is basically Cyrus and all the warriors gangs just hanging out, burning shit, basically. driving around classic cars, like yeah. every. Perfectly yeah. restored classic cars on this island. Well, yeah, I mean that's where they all end so up. They're so, all right? in LA like, right now, <laughs> anyway. So <laughs> yeah. I mean, so when it goes make, down, right? They're all just going to get stuck there and hang it's out. A little uh, Mad Max ish. Mm-hmm. Well, classic it's, cars, anytime you yeah. get your dystopian yeah. future, right? But in the original, yeah. they give him twenty four hours because that's when the summit's going to happen, and he has to get out in twenty four hours. Right. Yeah. It's like okay, you get a full day to explore New York. In this one, they give him what almost hours. seems like an arbitrary ten hours. Yeah. Because we got to up the stakes somehow. Right. But it's the gonna... attack is imminent at this point. I yeah. think that's why. The movie still runs about the same length of time. So, I mean, really, it doesn't matter. This is one of the first things I had an issue with. And, like, and they're reimagining. I'm like, why does it matter if it's 10 hours or 24 hours? Yeah. You're just putting a timer on yeah. it. Yeah. The movie's going to run the same amount of time. It's up to you as a storyteller to you know make it seem like it's urgent. Right. You know? I'm, I'm, I'm guessing they didn't want to shoot during the day. Yeah, this Just movie keep it all at one night. had like what twenty seven night shoots in a row. Yeah, like it was driving the people crazy because they had were on a fucked up third shift schedule of having to sleep during the day and go shoot at night for mm-hmm. a month straight. Mm-hmm. They envisioned vampire time. Yeah, yes, yeah. they envisioned it as a night movie, and they just kept with it. So they're just like, well, we have to have shorten the time, keep well, it all at that night. in the first one. But there's that kind of like well, he wakes super, up during the day. Yeah, he sleeps during the day. <laughs> he loses like ten hours during that point. In the uh-huh. movie. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So in the first one, they inject him with uh, these capsules that are, are lodged in his arteries that will explode. Yes. Uh, in 24 hours. They inject him. They states. inject him in the first one too. Well, that's what yeah, we're saying. It happened. It's the same. Beat literally beat the same, same movie. Wow. They, Man. Yeah. yeah. They inject him with two little capsules in his arteries <laughs> yeah. that will explode if they don't microwave them by the end of the movie. Which, wow. if you stakes, then you're just going to die in 10 hours. Like, yeah. exploding is way more like, That's uh, that's that's Yeah, that's a more imminent, just yeah, like, exactly. I'm going to explode. Okay. Yeah. But then go do some stuff. But this, this but that's what I don't get. I mean, you brought it up, but I've been yeah. thinking this for years. It's like this makes no sense. So in this one, his reason for getting out in the ten hours, they inject him with a uh, virus, and so he's going to get sicker and sicker and sicker the longer <laughs> until he dies. While you're asking him to do this incredibly physically demanding yeah. task. <laughs> at one point, at what one, sense does at that make? At one point, right. they're literally like, "Yeah, you better go do that." Just so you know, the next thing that's going to happen is you're going to get flu-like symptoms. Yeah, like, you're going to get weaker, less and, energy. Yeah, and you're going to get fever, which, like, have you ever tried to function do anything with a fever? It's hell. It's awful. Yeah. Like, yeah. Why would they do that to him? It's like, yeah. we need you to your, uh, we're, we're picking you because we want you at your peak performance to be able to get this job done because nobody else can do it. By the way, you're just going to slowly, like, battery Deteriorate. drain and yeah. deteriorate. I'm probably not going to be able to do much, but. Yeah. yeah. That do seemed it. like a little bit of a logic bomb right there. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah. 
that's hard to get past. Mm -hmm. They yep. surf in this movie. <laughs> so I'm just, I'm just, I'm just saying. I'm just he, saying. He what? says with a smile. <laughs> I mean, the hallmark of a bad movie is if you have like a scene where there's skateboarding, surfing, or rollerblading, right? Like, mm. no, if you see that, you're in trouble. No, I gotta, I gotta disagree. Oh, oh. Huh. <laughs> I feel like this is the mark of a 90s movie. We've got our checklist again. You know, we got the helicopter. We've got explosions. Gotta have a helicopter. We have surfing. We've you got know? our Rob Zombie I mean, music. Yep. That's very true. It's hitting some core 90s checklist points. It really is. Yeah. Well, we also had said that this basically checks off the dystopian future from the world of Demolition Man. Yep. Oh, yeah. Yeah, apparently the same Which universe. Came out three years before this, by the way. So you could argue this movie's knocking off Demolition Man. <laughs> so let's see. For the Demolition Check Man, Gem Demolition Man checklist, we have. The burning Hollywood sign. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We have the earthquake that, that created this dystopian future. If you can mm -hmm. remember, that's when Stallone's wife died in the big one in 2010. Uh, right. Yep. right. Uh, we had no swearing, no meat, no smoking, no fornicating, no drinking. Are the are not allowed in the future. Which is in interesting. <laughs> okay, so both of those movies, I mean, like, so this is like a zeitgeist kind of thing or something, mm -hmm. right? It's like mm -hmm. these are the last, like, gasps of the... Well, it feels like it's like the non-politically correct filmmaker, right, or star, I guess, Stallone in, in that case, and John Carpenter in this case, the iconic class, who's like, you know, I, I just want to be left alone so I can smoke, so I can eat red meat, so I can <laughs> swear and not have the morality right. police. Like on I'm my tired case. of everybody on my case. Yeah, he's actually gone and made the morality police like the president of the United States, who in this case is he made a them literal morality police. Fanatic. It, but but it's just like within Demolition Man, we only know the United States to exist within the L.A. area. Right, mm -hmm. Demolition Man, we don't know what happened to the rest of the fucking country. Right, and yeah, at yeah, this yeah, point, yeah. this all takes place in the same area too. It's it's, it's beat for beat. It's Demolition Man. Just <laughs> <laughs> it's not as good. I don't know. See, now I knew this was going to come up <laughs> about Demolition Man. And, and this being not as good, and I don't see how you can give a pass to Demolition Man and then torpedo this movie. Demolition effects Man. aside, because Demolition we all know the, the effects. Gauntlet. The yeah. effects <laughs> on the are, table are very bad in this movie. Demolition Man knows exactly what it is and doesn't take itself seriously. This movie takes itself seriously. No. Yeah. No. Yeah. What? Yeah, yeah, it has a movie where Snake Plissken surfs down Hollywood Boulevard or wherever the hell it was. It has a scene where he has to play. He hang glides. <laughs> Where he has to play, uh, he has to play basketball. basketball. He has to play basketball. Yeah, but that's done in slow mo, like it's serious. That's <laughs> yeah, a slow mo basketball a, shot, a free throw kind of. It's a joke. That's it. The did thing not about. feel like a, like a joke. It did not feel like. I a don't joke. know. I don't know if that's a joke, Colin. Isn't? I don't think it is. Isn't the whole thing like this more so than the first one? I think mm. the first one had an element of satire in there, where yes. it was kind of biting satire at society as a whole, yes. right? Because John Carpenter, I think, like, just it's his worldview. He works it into all of his movies. Yeah. But this one is, like, very, very broadly, like, a satire specifically of Los Angeles, uh, you know, the people of Los Angeles, the type yes. of people who live there. You know, I mean, but the Surgeon have, General of Beverly right. Hills, the, 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 surgery the, people. the gangs like that Holly times, pointed out that were driving by at 20 miles an hour shooting <laughs> right. at each other. You know, the kid gangsters. It's like, this is, you know, right? Yeah, but what the fuck does that basketball gladiator scene have to do with any of that? There's yeah, no commentary. John Carpenter being made. likes uh, basketball. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> as, as Holly pointed out, they acted like they're watching a gladiator fight and they're watching one guy shoot free throws while a bunch of people with guns are. It is a down. very serious moment in this movie. It's, yeah, it's real serious. Do you remember the gladiator fight from the first movie? Yeah, First baseball movie. bats with yeah, nails the, and whatnot. I'm telling you, like, everything that happens, yeah. you just call it out, we'll tell you what the <laughs> analogy is in yeah, the first the same movie. Thing. Yeah. Although the that's first okay. one, he has to fight the guy, the big yeah. Uh, yeah, wrestler okay. dude with the bats that have nails yeah. in him. Wait, awesome. stakes. Yeah. So yeah. But yeah. Not, not an exciting scene for me in the first movie. But like, the, I think it's the way it's shot. Cause it's, most the way it's, of, shot. it's the way it's shot. Because most okay. of it's wide angle, yeah. just outside of what's going on in there. You get a few that come in, but so, it's not like you're in the action. So it's not as exciting to me. So in this movie, we've got the, the, the Che wannabe, the Jose Cuervo. Yeah. Yes. Just, just, just like Cuervo, 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 Cuervo exactly. Jones. Cuervo exactly. Jones. Yeah. Exactly like Che. Um, who is it in the first movie? It's a revolutionary. The Duke of New York. He's, the Duke of New York. Uh, yeah. He's the guy it's uh, who, Isaac Hayes. Yeah. Who oh, runs Isaac, New York? Uh, uh, Finn Isaac Hayes is the Duke of New York. He's got he drives on the front of his car. Chandeliers on the front of his car, <laughs> okay. just on each one. It's great. All right, I kind of want to see. That. So they uh, oh, you should see it again. So they swapped that out for doll heads and basically, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Basically, well, he had the yeah. disco ball on yeah, the on back. The back. Yeah, yeah, very true. Yes. Yeah. Oh yeah, chandeliers. Okay, so the There's basketball Cabby. court. Ernest team. Borgnine is in that movie. Really. <laughs> 
Huh. Yes. So, so the basketball scene, you've got all these guys that, like, if you don't make the free throw points within the amount of time, whatever, like, they're going to shoot you. But they're all standing around the basketball court and all are shooting. They should be hitting each other. I believe yeah. that yeah. setup happens at least three times in the movie where yeah. Snake Everyone's is surrounded by... Or, yeah. It happens a couple times. And they all yeah. shoot at each other. And like, yeah. It's like, don't like, do that. You guys don't understand if you're gonna the shoot physics people. of this. Yeah. <laughs> don't stand in the circle. Don't stand in the circle. Don't stand across yeah. If you from get everybody. anything from this yeah. podcast, mm-hmm. take that away from me. That's, right, why, so that's why a firing a, squad isn't a straight line. Here's yeah, a question exactly. for you. John Carpenter is a director is a primarily circle. known for uh, his horror films, I think, right? Horror mm-hmm. and science fiction films. Yes. What's the best action movie that John Carpenter's ever directed? Escape from Hell. Escape from New York, I would say. I like it better than Big Trouble in Little China. I don't like that one as much. But as far as, I mean, okay, I'll grant you that. I mean, I think Escape from uh, New York's probably, you know, as an action movie. They Live is pretty good, too. Is it an action movie? Oh, They Live, They Live yeah. is definitely more of an action movie than a horror movie, for yeah. sure. Definitely more of an it's, action movie. Like there's, there's like a lot an more eight action minute fight scene nonstop. Oh, yeah, 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 I like They Live. Yeah. I'm going to have to go They Live that. is actually yeah. 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 But I think that's a thing. Like, both Escape from New York and Escape from L.A. are set up as action films, but mm-hmm. I don't think John Carpenter is I mean he's not obviously not a contemporary action no. film no. director. That's why I think Sean, you're having the problem with the uh, you know the 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 action beats in the original movie. Yeah, and I have a problem with the action beats in this one. The motorcycle chase where he's chasing Cuervo Jones. We're all going the, so slow. Yeah, on those motorcycles. Well, it's the kind of things that you do. It was like that's how like John Ford right would yeah. shoot like a stagecoach yeah. chase or something where the you know the cowboys are riding and the Indians are chasing on yeah. the horses or whatever. It's like that's what he's trying to do right. there. Yeah. And, and I think he's with, paying homage to the movies that he liked as a kid. Probably, There's a very yeah. heavy Western influence, very much in so. this movie. I'll, I'll, Absolutely, uh, with the, especially the shooting of just like it's always from like the chest up, mm-hmm. and it's always that shit. You can tell they're just they're not controlling anything that's going on right you're just right they're being, being told, told. Yeah, yeah it's very obvious and just with all that green screen background that happens within those parts that and they're always just driving like it's supposed to be a high speed chase it's supposed to be action packed and they're just kind of driving like five miles an hour mm-hmm. though that always that bothers me about this movie no, it's does- just not I, I, snake plissken on a motorcycle should be one of the most exciting things you see in a snake plissken movie and it yeah, was agree, not yeah, in this movie because he was made to ride a motorcycle right mm-hmm. yeah but it's not exciting yeah. Now, does the first one have a Western feel? No. No. Not at all? Not really. I mean, to me. Not in the... Not, not in the, handed. Yeah. I not mean, with the music it, that think, is in this oh movie. God. But I think that is exactly it. It's like, it's there in the first one, but it's kind of like this influence. Subtle? Yeah. Where in this one, it's like, okay, we're going to put Snake Plissken in a duster. Yeah. You know, we're going to make over his look and put him in a duster. We're mm-hmm. going to play a theme a song that is clear, has got a harmonica in it for Christ. A <laughs> twangy wow, guitar. Twang. Oh, yeah. Twang soundtrack was. He's identified as a gunfighter. He does the the draw. The draw. Yeah. Oh, the draw. Draw. He's like at the end, he's he's fucking Clint Eastwood at that point. Yeah. Cigarette. He's smoking a cigarette in his mouth, like tucked to the side. Spirit cigarette. Yeah. Yeah. That's what he was going for. It's like, this is his Western. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's, well, he's written a couple, but I think I'm sure. Just make one already. Man. No, it's Quit like push it how west was uh, was vampires as westerny? That yeah, was very westerny. Yeah, it too, it yeah. seemed like, from what I remember, it felt very westerny. Yeah, but I mean, so is you go back to like uh, Salt on Precinct Thirteen. Mm-hmm. It's basically uh, inner city version of Rio Bravo. Mm-hmm. You know, it's uh, only instead of the Indians outside or whatever, you've got right. the gang members and the police inside. Are very true. <laughs> And he likes, you know, obviously Westerns enough that Kurt Russell's basically doing uh, John Wayne in Big Trouble in Little China. So he's got, uh, you know, do <laughs> imitations of both Clint right. Eastwood and John Wayne. Yep. Which I'm sure Kurt Russell loved. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Ah, Kurt Russell. He's yeah. a Western guy. He's done Westerns before. It's kind of his Oh, God. Tombstone. Tombstone, oh. yeah. Man, I, I, I love to, that movie. I need to revisit and even Tombstone. More recently, I haven't seen that in a while. He was in Magnificent Seven, too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah so. mm-hmm. Was he? Yeah. You show up in that? Who's yeah. that? Kurt Russell? Yeah. Yeah. Bone Tomahawk? Yeah. Oh, Bone Tomahawk. Uh, yeah. 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 I mean, he's, yeah. Um, yeah. 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 Kurt Russell. All right. So, and this with Kurt Russell. Like, yeah, yeah. Kurt Russell. Yeah. Well, I mean, yeah. So Kurt, see, but that's so the thing. Like, yeah. Kurt Russell, it, it was Snake Plissken is one of those characters. I think that, like, you know. I think it's and it's like hard to pin down like what about him is so like appealing over all this time. But it's the idea, I think, that, you know, and maybe I'm saying this because Carpenter's pointed out and he made a, a, a concerted effort to make the same thing happen. He's the guy who's like when everything's like everything's going to shit. I don't know what the fuck to do. He'll like take a chair and sit down and go like, well, pff, 
I just got to think about it for a while. He's an action movie hero who sits and considers his options. Uh huh. You know. I don't know if that's what makes it more appealing, but that's what, you know, it is nice to see that it's just like not just constantly on the move and just going. I've got answers for everything. Bam, bam, bam. He's just going to sit and be like, very much like, well, fuck. What now? It it is a lot of it's like, I got to sit and think about it or I just got to. Yeah. 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 Like, well, what do I do? Or grab some and be like, where, where, (laughs) which point the way. He's constantly asking for directions. Yeah. <laughs> He's like wasting no time. It's just like, where is Clairvoy where? Jones? How do I get to right, where it's I'm like going? the easiest He's like pulling people off the yeah, street. It's like, like, I need I... to get here. How do I get there? Yeah. Go down that alleyway, honey. I guess that's what you do, right? I wonder if any of us would even would like either of these movies as much if it was not Kurt Russell in that role. Because it was supposed to be Jeff Bridges. Very true. And he, he didn't turned want to it do down it. and then later did Starman with Johnny. Mm-hmm. But this movie, Escape from LA, would be relegated to a direct to video shelf had an, were it not for John Carpenter and Kurt Russell. Like if you made the same exact movie, right. and everything, but just took those two out of it. Like yeah. Yeah. memorable, no, not at all. Yeah. This would nobody would watch this movie. I mean, I like. Does it. anybody watch this movie? I don't know, but yeah, I think <laughs> because it's a John Carpenter film, it, you know, it gets it's more like, consideration it's because it's in his filmography, and I think because it's related to the first one, mm-hmm. which I think still has you know a big enough mm-hmm. fan base that they're releasing special editions. Uh, you know, Shout Factory special putting them editions out. and remaking and it. And it so. seems like I mean, I watched the first one not too long. I was on like Movies TV or this or Grit or one of those. Like you know, they seem to <laughs> play it like all the time. So ah, Grit, it's still running out <laughs> yeah. there in perpetuity, yeah, right? There. Yeah. Yeah. Forever well, I mean, and when ever. When you think of Kurt Russell, the first two movies you think of are both Executive John, Decision. Are both okay, no, John not Carpenter that movies, right? right. The no. Thing and the Escape thing. from New York. Yeah. Or, or even Big Trouble in Little China and Escape from New York. Or, yeah. You know? No matter, <laughs> Tombstone and Overboard. Overboard. That's yep. <laughs> Overboard. There you go. <laughs> That's, yeah. Overboard. We had different well, childhoods. Tombstone yeah. and Overboard, <laughs> yeah. hands down. Uh, well, I know that Kurt Russell took a chance because he was a Disney kid before that. He'd done like the computer wore tennis shoes yeah. and all that. And I think he He'd done did a Elvis voice in The with, Fox uh, and the Hound. No one thinks of Sky High. What? When Sky High. That was, that's a good movie. <laughs> Has anybody seen Sky High? Uh, no. 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 The superhero movie? No. It's, that looks awful. It's actually a good movie. Really? Take that for what you will, is because I like this movie. <laughs> no, he's not. Okay. No, I'm that's like Spy Kids Spy 3. Kids, that's yeah. what he's what, No, what, it's actually yeah. a good movie. What year are we looking at there? Like 2000. Something. It's like two, yeah. the aughts. Maybe really? 2000, yeah. like six or it seven like or something like that. It was like an Disney movie, wasn't it? Maybe eight. I don't know this at all. I, yeah, yeah, I remember trailers. seeing trailers Yeah, it's like a high school uh, high school of superheroes, and they're like the famous actual superhero parents of one of them going to school. Really? So he's not in it like... A whole lot. He shows up from time to time and at the end during the big set huh. pieces and everything. It's actually a pretty good movie. Did we also <laughs> mention that Kurt Russell co-wrote this movie? He co-wrote. His only writing credit. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Because this, you can feel. He wrote I the think, entire ending of this movie. As you're watching the movie, I think like one of the things that is prevalent, you correct me if I'm wrong, okay. uh, is that you can feel that the people making the movie are having a lot of fun yes. making the movie. Oh, yeah. yeah. Like this is yeah. them fucking off. You know, it's like, ah, we got this money. Yeah. I mean, what are the things we wanted Pam to Greer do in a movie? Especially. Oh, Pam Greer. <laughs> Pam, Pam Greer. Way too much fun. They, I think they, it feels like they all are. They're doing something that I think, you know, like Carpenter and, uh, uh, and Russell love the character. Yep. Love, you know, people keep coming back to them. Even now, I saw Kurt Russell on the View promoting I saw it, yeah, uh, yeah. the Furious, and the they, Fate of the Furious, and they all they all had, they had eye, patches eye patches <laughs> because he's Snake Plissken. Wow. You know. Yeah. Yeah. So it's like it's still an enduring thing. But, but yeah, you know, what else can you do? Put on a beard and wear a big coat for the <laughs> yeah. thing. And like it's, the, it's also the easiest one to do. Yeah, yeah exactly. Marcus. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Nobody would get that joke. No. They're just like. Whoosh. Nope. <laughs> but it's odd to me that, like, I mean, I remember, you know, following John Carpenter's career, it was like, I was always kind of, I felt, you know, uh, dissatisfied with the way that he was treated, it seemed like, by the Hollywood establishment mm-hmm. as a whole, because it always seemed like, you know, he was relegated to, like, you know, the, yeah, we know John Carpenter's out there, but right. he's, you know. But I'm like, this guy's really talented, and what he does like speaks to me. And I watch all these movies all the time. And this was like a major studio production, and he had a budget for the first time in God knows how long. Because before this, he was doing like you know the Prince of Darkness, They mm-hmm. Live kind of stuff for, uh, you know, I mean those were you know you do them for like five million dollars or something like right. that, right? This it was like, basically the Blumhouse of the. This had a huge budget. This was like fifty yeah. million. And yeah. he didn't even make back like half of that. Well, yeah. Mm-hmm. Well. 
Hey. <laughs> and he's fifty million in nineties dollars. So uh-huh. That's even more money. Damn, well, that's like a hundred million. Yeah, it, it all went on the extras, right? Because yeah. it's, yeah. it's full of extras. So well, the first one's devoid of people. This mm-hmm. one's like overflowing. Yeah. Yes, people inhabit this LA. The LA yeah. Yeah. so crowded. So <laughs> crowded. <laughs> mm-hmm. Oi. Yeah. So I mean, that was the thing. Like, this was his big chance, right? You figure if because he he's a filmmaker who like always gets the chance and then somehow blows it. Not entirely his fault, I'm uh-huh. saying, but you know, based on the success of Halloween, which was the you know the number one or the highest grossing independent, independent film for the longest time. I think until the Crying Game unseated it like oh, in the nineties. Yeah. Blair Witch until, and, until as well. My big fat Greek wedding. There it is. Technically an independent movie. Halloween was still the first. Yep. Oh, I thought the Crying. They said the Crying Game was. Well, what about that? Uh, might have unseeded it, but now it's my big fat. Right. Yeah, now yeah, it is. What a, Blair Witch wasn't yeah, that the highest know, at I, that point? It was like that was maybe. like a three hundred thousand dollar movie and made mm-hmm. millions. Yeah. But he had an opportunity to go studio with the thing, and then that bombed all over everywhere, and that like torpedoed his career. I think he didn't yeah. get the same kind of chances. And this was like, you're going to get a chance again, John. You know, right. you're not dead yet. You can still make more movies. In I know what I'll do. <laughs> Escape from L.A. Well, that's why they're giving him the money. Yeah, but I guess like. Uh, well, that's a wrap up thing. So the movie, <laughs> the movie, this movie, <clears throat> the Plutoxin well, yeah. Seven virus. Yes, the, we, yeah, that they inject him. Yeah, with he's it. Infa- so like like you said earlier, it's like so subtle that they infected him in this movie. He's walking in the hallway Slash and she gets yeah. basically yeah. just. Yeah. Yeah. It's like Jesus, you could you really could have just. You know, shot him at some point. Yeah, right. yeah with a little dart or yeah, something. Yeah. That something. They have the gear. You mean an oral project projectile? An oral yeah, projectile. an oral projectile. Yeah, right in Bruce Campbell's Great. forehead. <laughs> nice visual there. That's the calling out the the surgical uh, environment of L.A. That's definitely a satire on that. That was the freaky. Surgeon General, yeah, the Surgeon General, oh, yeah. and oh, then yeah. just all the freaky faces and everything. That was uh, creepy. Mm-hmm. That was really creepy. Mm-hmm. That was that uh, scene creeped like seriously creeped me out. Yeah. It was gross. It seemed really like out of place with the rest of the movie too. Like it seemed like it, a better the well, because, better part of yeah, the movie. Yeah, well, because like, that that scene that scene was the only part that had horror elements. Yeah, that's why. Well, yeah. It's like, probably uh, a big part of it. Did we mention that Bruce Campbell was in it? Unrecogn- oh, yeah. I didn't remember because he's unrecognizable. I yeah, mean, you get his chin. voice, the chin mm-hmm. is there, but yeah. other than that, he's unrecognizable. He came walking out, I, was, I looked at the hair and heard the voice, I'm like, is that who I think it is? I'm like, yeah. I'm seeing the credit and I know the character he plays, but I don't remember him. It's like, ah, oh, now I know why, because he's all surgically fucked yeah. up in this movie. Mm-hmm. It's a good scene. It is a good scene. It's, it's creepy scene. It's very quick, though. It's just like... It is. I do like that in this, though, they make... It's like LA's divided up into different fun houses. And there's you get a you get a different, different flavor for every one you visit. There's and different gangs and each gang yeah. has their own like little the like warriors. world. Like yeah, you said, exactly. it's like the warriors yeah, it is and like they the all warriors. have their own world. Yeah. But I like that we get to visit each one of them and that yeah. shows like the the different sects of of the uh, I was of a little LA. disappointed because when they talked about going to visit Pam Greer that like they talked about how like oh she like runs this shit and everything. And so I was expecting like in Sin City when you go and you see like the, the, I can't remember what they're called, but Rosario Dawson's character, part of Sin City, like yeah. the women run that whole thing. Yeah. Like oh, yeah. Around. Yeah. I was expecting more like that, and like you get there, and it's not it's really not, that cool. No, she's got the, uh, <laughs> the a, Asian. It's a pool with the gang of Asians. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. The Saigon <laughs> Red of the something screaming dragons. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. But it's is that, like, I mean, that's what I'm assuming, right? I haven't been to LA, but I assume that's. Uh, that's it. Whatever you get from this movie, that's exactly what it looks like. I actually. <laughs> to this day. Well, I mean, that there's these different neighborhoods or sections. Of the that's, city but that it is, yeah, it they would, are enhancing that because that's yeah. definitely what it is. It would have been more appropriate if Pam Greer's um, sect was the th- um, the theater with all the, yeah. with all the prostitutes. Yeah, that would have been more fitting, I think. Oh yeah, for sure. Why yeah. so, yeah. Holly? Why would that be fitting for Pam Greer? Um, because it's fancy. <laughs> <laughs> because of the right, I'll take that. theatricality of the character, yeah. I assume they've yeah. done something yes. really weird to Pam Greer's voice because yeah. she's they supposed to be post. a transvestite, mm-hmm. which I'm like, that's really flattering to yeah. you know. Oh, look, Pam Greer, that's who I think of when I think of a transvestite. Wow. Right. Uh, but she probably had so much fun with that though. She's you, she's probably. used to being like the sexy woman, and now she gets to be like the transvestite. Right. Can you that, that had to been fun John for John Carpenter. Be like, I have a role for you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> she said for her audition, she shoved like three socks down her 
pants and walked in like that. Like, start laughing. <laughs> We're like, all right, okay. You yes, that's Hershey. the race. So. Hershey, yeah. That's yeah. great. Car Jack Malloy. So you're going like, well, who's Hershey in this? Well, the whole idea of like something happening in A Cleveland. Mm-hmm. In the first one, uh, where was it? Where Fresno, Bob, and Harold? Yeah. Harold Hellman? You, me, and Fresno Bob. You remember mm-hmm. what they did to Bob? What was so there was like something that happened mm-hmm. before the movie where someone he meets in you know the right. environment has fucked him over. That happened in yeah. the the original. Why are we making that uh, Escape from Cleveland? Why isn't that well the next you know movie it's in there? The only reason Cleveland's mentioned so much is because John Carpenter claims he knows someone named Snake Plissken. Yeah, in yeah, Cleveland. yeah. That's it. That's the only reason why Cleveland is mentioned so much. Yeah. But and it we, sounds like a whole other movie we missed out on the way they talk about it. Does. It does. Yeah. And speaking oh, what of, was the, where was the place in the first one? You just watched it this I afternoon. D- I so. basically did. Um, uh, uh, I watched that part of it two days ago. Yeah, I don't okay. remember. I don't uh, know no. where that was. But yeah, <laughs> but okay. Speaking of Fresno Bob, we learned Snake's name in this movie. Yeah, S.D. Bob Pliskin. Yep. Don't they say something like that? Doesn't Hauk say something SD. like in the beginning? <laughs> I don't uh, when, he, when he brings him in SD Bob Plissken. I don't think he mentions it. Decorated though. by the whatever the hell. So I think a, he just calls him Snake in that. No, he does, does he give him a name? His, a name. No, yeah. I don't remember that one. Call me Snake. Yeah, Snake. How many times does he say that? Until the end when he says, "Call me Plissken." I was like, "Wait, no wait, sense. make up your fucking yeah, mind, there, exactly. Snake." Uh, that He's also, contrarian. That He's also contrarian. happens in the first movie. Does it? Also, uh, oh, yeah. it's also the running joke in this one is like, "I thought you'd be taller." In the first uh, yeah. one, it's like, okay, I thought Kurt, you were dead. Kurt yeah. Russell's All not the a time. short guy. He's not no? particularly short. He's, <laughs> no, he's but still you, taller than everyone that says, I thought you'd but be tall. But when you're thinking but of Snake Plissken, you're just but like, it's because But it's because he's a celebrity. And, and he, everybody and people, comes up to him right, and, and they're like, always, I thought you were yeah, taller. Exactly. You're taller. Yeah. I'm sure the Tom Cruise gets that a lot. But yeah, there's always that running juggle. Like, I thought you were dead. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Leg wound happens and he gets shot. He does get an arrow, arrow in the his first leg. one. He gets um, a shot does, in the leg in this one. So he has a limp. C- oh does my someone, god! Does someone bite his leg wound like Che Wannabe does? <laughs> no, <laughs> no, I don't think there's any biting in the first. That was no, weird. But I think the Duke like punches it a couple times in that last fight. Or That's something. Yeah. more normal. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I'll go with that. Um, so Snake Plissken has this like celebrity to him, which yeah. is also kind of like I get in the first movie. That he's known to the officialdom of, uh, you know, the United States police force, right? Mm-hmm. Hauk is also a soldier because yeah. uh, Pliskin and Hauk were, they fought in Russia, apparently, in Leningrad or whatever the hell. Yeah. And, uh, you know, for World War Three, I assume, right? Yeah. So it's like Hauk kind of respects uh, Snake Pliskin, you know, but he recognizes he's a criminal. Right. And so he's choosing for this mission. In this movie, we've got, what's his name, Malloy or something? The uh, Stacey Keach yeah. character. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Nobody, <laughs> nobody badmouth Stacey Keach on this podcast. Thank you. I didn't have a problem Why, with him. Why does he listen? I like, I, he does. <laughs> <laughs> he's a friend of mine. I prefer we not insult him on the podcast. I didn't mind him. I, I, have, like no, I have no Keech. complaints about him. He's fine. He has all the dialogue like Hauk does in the first one. Like, yeah. no, 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 you got to give Pliskin some more time. Just believe in Pliskin. Pliskin says he thinks like Pliskin. So at the end, when uh, Snake mm-hmm. puts the 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 which the unit, there's a couple of things that you know about how he uh, yeah uh, the first one well, yeah he puts the unit in her her uh, dress right so they'll find it and think that that's the real one because he but tried he's to hide actually it. got the and you're like. What kind of fucking twisted logic is that? And they do it at the beginning, too, where he's like, you know, they give him a loaded gun. And he's like, I, I, neither one of you is going to cure me with the antidote. Yeah. And then he opens fire. We thought you'd do something like that. Hot shot. So we loaded to the first clip with <laughs> blanks. It's like, if you know this guy oh, so that's wonderful. why do people know him so well? Yeah. I'm like, holy shit, they were really banking on him, like, shooting with blanks at them right away. <laughs> yeah. He could have fucked up the whole mission had he waited to actually yeah. shoot the president's daughter yeah. later yeah. on. Or anybody. Yeah. It's like, uh, yeah. Life yeah. or death moment where he's yeah. got to yeah. shoot someone. And, right, you'd have dead. And it's just like, oh. yeah, what yeah. a fucking gamble to make. <laughs> yeah, but everybody, I guess in the first one, I think they would have heard him, him before too. he went down into the sub. And like, by the way, that one's got blanks in it. If he hadn't shot them, that's it. <laughs> they were just expect, well, they're right. expecting because he's he Snake Plissken. And that's right. what he does. That's what he does. Most readable person in the universe, <laughs> <Yeah>. apparently, <laughs> and he's the most famous. Everybody recognizes him. Like that's in the first one, I thought that was weird. Yeah. But they and never that say hair. that. And that <laughs> hair. Yeah. It's like, hey, hair and your the hair. Edge wears the same outfit all the time. I recognize that yeah. hair. Black leather, holsters on your legs. Yep. 
What has he been doing to like make himself the most I wanted don't man know. in America? I mean, they say he's convicted of like 15 moral crimes or something like that. Yeah, but he could have spat in the wrong his area. Utopia could just be swearing, smoking, drinking. Yeah. At this point, that's probably me. Yeah. Considering that's he just wants them. to be alone, that's probably what it is. Yeah, yeah I get a burger understand. and a smoke. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He's a felon. All yeah, mm-hmm. <laughs> I don't understand what he does in his spare time. I mean, that's my biggest question out of all this. Gunfighting, they tell you. He's gunfighting in New Thailand. For what, snake? though? But for what? <laughs> Who's for money? <laughs> for fun? Money? Like just... He's a fatalist, right? Well, it that's... seems like he should be old man Logan that he just wants to go out right, into the... Exactly. Yeah. 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 And be left alone yeah. and yeah. nothing. Yeah. Like, he doesn't want anything to do with anybody. Yeah, a, right, right, but because he just wants to be Stewart? free, well, yeah. these people keep imposing their laws on him and he just can't take it. He keeps Plus, if you know Snake... Arrested. Right, if you know Snake Pliskin's around, you're going to want to challenge him. You're like, you're Snake Pliskin. I could kill you. But yeah, I guess, okay. Just so. don't challenge him to free throws because he's really good. He's, he's really, really good. good. <laughs> That's he's what he's really been good. doing. He's yes, playing he's been basketball. He's playing his basketball <laughs> game. His basketball and game. like that uh, trick, the yeah. can trick earlier on. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. Draw. Well, he's one of those guys who can do anything, right? You need yeah. him to fly a plane, a glider, a submarine, a helicopter. Surf. You need him to surf. <laughs> he's special forces, okay? Well, it's true. He surfing. was special forces, I suppose. They didn't the teach training. The guy, like, explained to him what to do. Yeah, the guy was and like, those, man, you don't want to... In those 20 anymore. seconds. <laughs> in those 20 uh, seconds it took him. Yeah. Peter yeah. Fonda yeah. teaches him. Yeah. He serves with Peter Fonda in this movie. Uh, yes, he does. A very, very <laughs> toasted. Not just yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He, They said, oh, it's a tsunami. It's a yeah. big It's one. like the uh, L.A. Yeah. River, yeah. too. It's yeah. just like, yeah. it used to be that fucking thing. Now yeah. it's just a big tsunami that comes through there. Oh, 20 God. seconds, he explained uh, okay. him how to surf, and he how was a pro. How does he surf with any, without any depth perception? How does he do anything uh, without any depth? Uh, so well that he can get close uh, enough to high five him just yeah. before he flies off into a car. <laughs> it's the greatest thing ever. <laughs> it's so good. I kind of loved it. Uh, <laughs> how do you not find joy in these things? What just, is wrong? What happened to your guys' childhoods <laughs> that you do not find joy in things like this? I'm sure someone on the internet has already done it, but someone please take that scene and just put in Wipeout over it. Please oh, do. Why? I mean, it, it was, yeah. I'm sure it was this close to being in this movie. You couldn't yeah, the rights or couldn't afford yeah, it. Yeah, probably <laughs> at this point because they put a, the you, surf music in there. You're yeah. saying that this movie takes itself seriously? It, mm-hmm. it can't take itself seriously with a, a scene where <laughs> I think it, I think it does, but I think, uh, but I think I think John Carpenter's right tastes then. are not looked at as seriously, and I think that's I think that's how people look at Carpenter, and I think that I think his tastes are serious for what he has made in this movie. I think he is being serious, and I think other people see that and don't take it seriously, and that's kind of why he doesn't get the respect he, I mean, so obviously deserves at this point, but I think that's what people see in the things he makes. I, th- I, think, I think that's a part of it, because I think he is doing this seriously, but I think he's kind of, he might sometimes be his own worst enemy in some of the things he makes. Because why, then? You're saying if it's not tongue-in-cheek... It's serious. It feels in which case, like then it. it's when like. When has he ever made a tongue in cheek <clears throat> movie? Yeah. He's not well, a tongue in cheek guy. Yeah, it's he's like, this is. Uh, uh, the Memoirs of an Invisible Man? Well, wow, it's like a that, straight never comedy seen it. Though, Yeah. Never seen it. You were the that's only a, one that saw that. I like that movie. No, no, no. That's a good What? I mean, come on. I like Big that Trouble movie. Trouble in Little China is a hilarious movie. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> it is a comedy. It's comedy, action, mystical, martial arts. Huh? Who wrote that movie? W.D. Richter, who wrote uh, The Adventures of Bakaru Banzai Across oh. the Eighth Dimension and Dracula, the movie that we watched. But I think it's written as podcast. a like it's also written as a comedy. <clears throat> Which one? Big Trouble. Well, yeah, that's what I'm saying. The, but I don't think like I don't oh, think this was so. written as a comedy. Like I think that's Ugh. the difference. I'm I'm I, I really think they, that's he he drives his uh, underwater submarine that he's getting in, and it goes by sh- Universal Studios <laughs> and, and the sh- Jaws shark comes out the mechanical shark comes up and tries critique. to bite him that's what it is the, the, uh, I mean there are, are elements of yeah. it in this movie this yes. is not a serious movie okay okay but multiple people had a hand in writing this right well, yeah. but they were all but, it was like yeah. Hill. they're all like buddies they're all but it's oh, all like the I same know, person I, at this I don't point. think John Carpenter was necessarily the one that wrote those comedic parts right I, that does not has have his taste in it it doesn't feel like and even still a reference mm-hmm. to something isn't necessarily a comedic beat you know just because they're referencing right. something that already existed it's, and also you know. also like those scenes had to have been created during what was going on or at least after the movies like because that whole scene is CG. 
So, I mean, at that point... No, that, I couldn't tell by that, the way it looked. Right. <laughs> but n- not necessarily, like, how much control does he have over, like, those scenes that he's making? Like, we need a submarine trip to here. It's got to hit these beats in it. Like, I assume you're the as director. As putting, you get to, like, approve the special effects and say no, and we're going to change this, we're going to do that. Not, this is making cursed with the wine scenes. Yeah. Well, I mean, but maybe well, somebody John comes Carpenter in. Carpenter with yeah. your second chance at... And you've got Kurt Russell, who Wes probably Craven had was as big more... was bigger than John Carpenter when But he Kurt Russell was huge. Huge when Escape Very from New York or L.A. came out. And he seems like yeah. he was a big part of this movie. I mean, obviously. Was he a producer on it, too? I, I didn't, yeah, I didn't he, see. Was he, he a producer? A producer. Yeah. There was a title card that said, like, executive producers, Deborah Hill and Kurt Russell. Mm-hmm. But we don't know his taste. Maybe that was yeah. his idea. Sharks mm-hmm. and whatnot. Yeah, I think they're just, hey, like, they're having fun. He, they get he, to skew, like, L.A., mm-hmm. and they're just roasting L.A. culture in this movie. Like, it's a satire of Los Angeles. He's very proud of the the final line of the movie because he wrote that. Welcome to the human race. I like that. He's really proud. I like when I was when I was younger. I liked that line a lot. Mm -hmm. I used to practice that line. That was one of the just like standing in the mirror practicing being. Welcome to the human race. (laughs) Come on. Kurt Russell, is that you? I know. When did you walk into the That's I like. I used to. That was a good line. I like that line. Mm-hmm. I like it. It's okay. good. That whole ending scene, I was a big fan of. The ending scene seems. The ending seems out of tone with the movie, but in tone with the character of Snake Plissken. Yes, that he would doom the entire. Right. World. Yeah. It's just like. <laughs> was he? Give, he like he said, Plissken. we're all going to die anyway. So who gives? Yeah. You know, who gives yeah. a fuck? Basically, he doesn't you know? care. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he doesn't like, care. We all get to start over. Technology. Great. Nothing. Yeah, because yeah. nothing's going to change for him. <laughs> exactly. Yep. It's a dangerous. Killed man. all those people on life support, but you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> oh wow! <laughs> oh shit, Colin! Why are you bringing us down while we're watching this comedy movie? Where's the movie? Oh, Jesus! I mean, where's the movie of all the people in hospice care that they, died? As by the yep. way, uh-huh. yep. they Snake weren't going to they weren't gonna have a quality of life. No, probably That's not. You know, but point. this is also well, he's going back to Darwinism, right? It's yes. like now the fittest will survive because yeah. like, the Dr. debt record is gone. Fed. Yeah, he's point. just Dr. Gordon at this <laughs> yes. point, right? <laughs> but one of the funniest parts of this movie was like at the beginning when they're kind of figuring when they're um, uh, sending people off to LA they're just like the announcer's going on no, like, yeah. if you choose to you can have yourself electrocuted on site before you go like instead of going over to LA that's great and there was yeah. kids watching adults get electrocuted yeah. on site yeah. oh yeah. my yeah. god that was dark. That was a dark they movie. They do that in yeah. the first one. Yeah, not yeah. serious movie. You have children watching people get electrocuted <laughs> in the first scene in the movie. Wonderful. Black comedy. Because children are also criminals. Yeah. Just. Yeah. Well, why, yeah. why are they, you they're hanging out on the. the yeah. Well, yeah, there's a gang of kids. There's a gang of small Asian yeah, children. But how did they get there? Did they get, like, tr- tried for their crimes and sent to that island? Well, see, I'm I assume. How they did the kids get there? I assume there? that they I'm just. They yeah, that they. That when the. They didn't evacuate everybody, obviously. They just sealed off, like, Los Angeles and said that place has already gone to hell. Mm. And then it fell into the water. And then it fell into yeah. the water, so they just left everybody there. But yeah, that's but the thing. It's but like they're the, sending fresh kids. But they were, yeah, those <laughs> oh, yeah, oh, very yeah. true. Oh, yeah. right, they right, are. Right, they are right. Right. sending yeah. fresh children, as you say. There was, like, <laughs> 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 there was, like fresh, 20 fresh of them in that hallway. <laughs> 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 yes. Ah, we're running low. We need more children. Yeah. <laughs> Please send fresh ones. Not those dirty, rotten ones. Give us fresh ones. Yeah. Oh, my gang. Did you think when you were watching this movie that, like, Snake Plissken would be more at home in Los Angeles than in the United States. Yeah. Uh, yeah, mm-hmm. definitely. Yeah. So why would you want to escape from L.A.? I mean, I get why you want to escape from New York That's because exactly. there's no freedom in there. I mean, you have the world that they've created, but it's still surrounded by, you know, I mean, it's grimy, dirty, yeah. and everybody's trying to kill even his, even his female kill com- Even his female companion at the beginning of the movie is like, well, once you figure it out, it's not a bad place. Mm-hmm. Like, this is the only free place anymore, not yeah. the United States. I mean, it's she like subsequently gets shot. Man. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Yeah, there you go. If it's only like, it was yeah. ruled by Edgar Friendly and not the... And the yeah. uh, Rat burgers, which I'm sure there were. We Megalomaniacal Cuervo Jones. Not Jose Cuervo. Yes, Cuervo yeah. Jones. What a great, <laughs> not so great villain. Seems kind of like a racist name. A little bit. A little bit <laughs> for, you know, a Che Guevara yeah. ripoff. Que- what, what, what's Hispanic? Tequila. Tequila's. Yeah. Yeah. Uh-huh. Jones. Jones. Yeah, that's Jones. how they connected I dots. feel like in the movie he chose his name. Uh, I feel Probably. like it was definitely a, a, yeah. Sure. Well, I'm no, assuming I, that he yeah, wasn't. Yeah, I'm agreeing with you. Yeah, what, I'm yeah. agreeing with you. Okay. I was just saying, like, wait, you feel what? No, I feel like he chose his name. <laughs> yeah. It's like, I will be Colonel probably. Jones. Probably. He probably, he was, you know, like, he was probably one of those kids that tried to give himself a nickname, and everyone's like, that's not how it works. And, T-Bone. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and that's, yeah. There it is again. <laughs> yes. Yeah, well, it's not, that's 
why he turned bad because people were like, dude, you don't give yourself a nickname. And he's like, fuck you. I don't yeah. give myself a nickname. And that's how he fuck you, guy. jerk store. <laughs> <laughs> and then he's Corvo Jones. So that's his life. And so that's why he turned to the bad side and became you, a bully. Yeah, that's how you create villains. There it is. Don't give them the nicknames yeah. they want. Yeah. <laughs> it's gonna go wrong. So uh-huh. what was what was really the point of the president's daughter? Did she I mean she serve? stole the black box? I mean, I feel like they didn't need that character. You are correct. Oops. Yeah. Wait, wait, wait. Yeah. Sorry. Ah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, there's. But really to be no fair, point. I suppose then in that regard, you didn't need the president in the first one. If you only needed the briefcase that was attached to his hand, mm-hmm. but Don they still say, doesn't like, do you got to get the president back. You know, he doesn't mm-hmm. do a whole lot in that movie. But to get the president's daughter back, and then it turns out, well, you don't even really need yeah. her. Then what's she there for? This movie kills off characters a lot more with a lot more uh, regularity than the original. Before you have a chance to get really attached to anybody, Who's it, it kills them off. Renata from Hot Shots. <laughs> Yeah, I don't remember yeah. what her character's name was because right. she was barely Holy introduced t- in the movie. Yeah. Well, who else besides that? Like, who gets killed off? Hershey. Yeah. Like, uh, what kind of in a blaze of glory? Well, in, a blaze the, of glory. In, in the back in afterthought. In the, <laughs> in the, yeah, it's like, well, we can't go back to the mainland with this many characters, so something <laughs> needs to happen. Yeah. Steve Buscemi, you jump out. Steve Buscemi's in this movie, by the way. Yeah. We haven't even mentioned that yet. Longest running part. I think. He does yeah. Yeah. as uh, Maps and Stars Eddie. Yeah. That's a cabbie from the first. Sorry, go ahead. Basically, yes. Yeah, yeah. He would be cabbie because somebody's yeah. got to drive somebody around in this place. Yeah. I mean, it's a it's a rural area. You have to drive around a lot. Right. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It being LA. How, how is he making it in this? In this, society? he's working for Cuervo. Like yeah. he's his agent. He's, he's like an, an out. He's, he's a field yeah. agent for Cuervo yeah. at this point. Yeah. He's got yeah. the fucking the darts in the glove box. See, this isn't like a. That's what I'm saying. It's a comedy. It's a satire about because the only guy like he's the, the agent is still like able to scrape by or somehow right. Right. maneuver through the wasteland of Los Angeles. In true, yeah, just by being slick and yeah. by the skin of his teeth, he's doing it. Mm-hmm. I, I mean, everything you're saying sounds right. Like I'm, I, I want, I want to agree with you because you're just like, yeah, because you know they make this comment on agents and they're just slimy guys and they pick Steve Buscemi for it. It's kind of like perfect for it. Everything you're saying sounds correct. It just feels like there's a serious tone to it. I don't know. It's weird. Yeah, it's, it's hard. It's hard no, to I pinpoint. Think it's serious yeah, for sure. I don't. I, think it it just feels be serious, humorous. but everything you're saying is just like it. It everything you're saying is like evidence that points to this being more satire, like them. Doing mm-hmm. that on purpose. It doesn't yeah. feel smart enough to be satire, though. Like it doesn't feel like it's making its point enough to be satire. Yeah. yeah, that's why I think it's one of these cases of like I think. Okay, this is uh, listeners. You're going to have to agree or disagree with this. If you live in L.A., this is a movie made for people who live in L.A. Like they get the joke. Right, because it's made specifically for them, and the rest of us are. They like, would reckon eh, it's a cool science fiction movie or whatever, right. but it's made for people who live in L.A. because they're seeing all the like. I'm sure in theaters when it's played, there was crazy laughter, like oh, the right. happy kingdom sunset. And, ah! yeah, yeah, just because it's on there, you yeah. might be right. This may be specifically for like an L.A. crowd that he's playing more to them than anybody yeah, we else. We get the action story, but they get the the, the in, comedy. Right, so yeah. okay, so Maybe. F- so for us. If this was taking place in Chicago, would we feel the same? Well, but the you what, recognize what, everything. But it's what? Like, first of all, what elements of Chicago like can you? Because it's easy to put on screen L.A. or Hollywood in general, kind of like the over the top Navy Pier, Wrigleyville. South no, no, no. Well, I'm talking like, about like the, all, the surgical, the surgically enhanced people. Yeah, I'm not talking like locations. Corruption shit, you know, yeah. you do all that, you know. But there's like, there's uh, there's more like, it feels like there's more to it in L.A. Surface level, you know. But there's mm-hmm. more like outrageous things that happen in L.A. because it's Hollywood. Because everybody forever and mm-hmm. ever is always like looking at Hollywood because it's all it's like you know it's definitely its own little like insular place. Yeah. So you it's, can it's identify these different world, these yeah. elements that make it Hollywood, right? Specifically, and mm-hmm. that I mean it's got more so in L.A. than. New York's got it too, but more so than Chicago. Chicago's mm-hmm. more of a it's a little blander in that regard, I guess. But there's definitely more elements you can pick out for LA that you can make fun of specifically. Like I Chicago think. doesn't feel like a different world, just a big city. Right. right. I gotcha. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, there's more in common with like New York and Chicago and LA is like the outside mm-hmm. one. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I think I that's feel you. why. I feel you, bro. <laughs> All right. Well, I think. I mean, we covered surfing. They hang glide to an uh, <laughs> to a helicopter at the end. Yeah, to, to hang, Disney. hang glide, this which time. is really to Disney. Slow yeah, because fast. they make that joke that it's Disney. Because they, uh, what does he say? Snake says, uh, that thing "Hey, in is Paris that, killed him." Yes, uh, exactly. That Paris, thing in Paris yeah. killed him. Yep. Yeah. It's Disney. 
And Happy Town is the town from Back to the Future. It really is the square. Hill Valley. It is the square it from is, Back to the Future. It is Hill Valley. Yep. Clock Tower's in there. Yep. Mm-hmm. All shot in the back lot. Mm-hmm. It yeah. kind of made me sad to see it in such shambles. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. like, get out of here, you street rat. <laughs> yeah. Is it before or after the fire? Yeah. First this or second. This is definitely before. Uh, yeah. Is it still standing or are they rebuilt it? Or it's oh, it's still down? there. No, yeah. it's still there. Uh, it a lot down of, like a couple times in there. At least yeah, once. At least well, there was that big fire. I don't think it yeah. uh, didn't take down the square. It took down a lot of mm-hmm. like the other stuff. Mm-hmm. But there was a big fire there. But yeah, I, I don't know. I think if we covered it, I think we've covered it. Uh, there's it. nothing. Uh, there's nothing outstanding. We've discussed the ending, and now he shuts down the Earth. So next, <laughs> yeah. Escape from Earth or Ghosts of Mars, which somebody said was originally written as a Escape from New York or the really? Escape from Earth idea. <laughs> they said Escape from Earth would be the third one, but this Escape one failed Earth. at the box office. Yeah. So instead, you get the Snake Plissken Chronicles comic book. I'd Everybody's watch, read it. I'd no? watch him go to space. Be, I would I would watch that for sure. Eh, no, I like it more as a Western figure. I don't want to see him. Yeah, space. but that's Escape from or whatever. Yeah, I don't know how Escape from Mars Cleveland. Or, yeah. Escape from yeah, Cleveland. He just, he just wants to be alone. How much more alone do you get than in outer space? Well, well that's you know? the that's the end of the movie yeah, where he's just in the ship going. There you go. You guys, they can. And then he, for the like, last time, okay. he lights up. Yeah, just. Lights in and then a, a little warning goes off, going, eh, 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 yeah. and he's like. They can yep. never cover that magnificence with a, with a helmet. That can't. No, happen. no, no. They wouldn't. <laughs> that can't happen. No, no, they wouldn't. Like, like, full, no. Like, full gear, just hanging just out in this ship. Space. Yeah, floating around in zero G's. Yeah, that's all he needs. Yeah. Duster, no space. Him in a jetpack. <laughs> yeah. Did uh, you guys ever see a movie called Lockout with Guy Pierce? No, I never. I wanted to see it. Nope. I still have not. Where in the future there's a asteroid or a space station that's a prison, and the president's daughter is doing a tour, and she gets kidnapped, and he is a criminal who is sent in there to get her out. Spiritual yep. sequel in 24 hours or less. Produced by Luke Besson. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. John oh. Carpenter sued him. <laughs> sued him. <laughs> yes. But have you yeah. seen the movie Doomsday where Rona Mitra plays an eye-patched uh, mm. person who has to go behind a wall in order to get somebody out? I can't oh, remember. Oh, dear Lord. Malcolm McDowell or something Did like John that. Um, I guarantee you it's yeah. Malcolm McDowell no, because that's all he does anymore. Yeah. Oh. Goddamn Malcolm McDowell. Don't no, I skipped that movie. That didn't look good at all. It's like a mashup <laughs> between it. Escape from New York, <sighs> Aliens, and like Excalibur, and then it ends up being Did you meet uh, the Road him? Warrior. Yeah. yeah, you met Road Malcolm Warrior. McDowell. Yeah. 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 It didn't look good. It's uh, like channel surfing. Yeah, yeah. 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 Mm, nope. Skip that one. Well, right. I do like a Rona Mitra every now and then, but yeah. other than that, <laughs> nope. Stick with the Hollow Man. No, no, fuck that movie. <laughs> oh, okay. we talked about that. I'm fuck. You know what? I'm gonna bring. Three. I'm bringing that oh movie God. because I will, I will. I will not be here for that. You one. will be because I will like. <laughs> I will tell them we're picking a different movie, and then I will spring Hollow Man on you when you get here. <laughs> See, See, that's that. You're just like I'm, I got food poisoning yeah. from Colin's undercooked food. <laughs> I have to go home. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> All right, uh, so we've covered Escape from L.A. I think a little bit. has been covered. I think there are still yeah. some questions that we will never answer, but... Well, maybe is. we will on our wrap up. So don't leave us, because oh, what we're going to do is we're going to read some uh, listener mail, and we hope you write into us, and then we're going to come around and do our final thoughts, where you're going to find out what each one of us thought of Escape from L.A. I know right now you're probably going like, well, we got it broken down. We know who's going to go which way, but maybe you're wrong. Boot, anything can happen. Colin's going to come back and love round. this movie. Yeah. I've said <laughs> you never it, know. I've said it before. I've been surprised by our wrap-ups. Yep. So, there you go. Mm-hmm. You'll so see. You go. So before then, we're going to summon Igor, our mailman. Igor, bring us the mail. Masters, masters, the mail. I've got the mail. So many letters. Our followers are rising, rising. Why, thank you, Igor. Thanks, Igor. He's wearing an eye patch for the occasion. Oh, oh you guys, no, 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 no. That's, that's a condition. Oh, did he? <laughs> <laughs> oh. Yeah. yeah. Sean, why did you have to point it out? That's a really Sorry, insensitive. Igor. He's very sensitive. <laughs> really sensitive. <laughs> yeah, there he goes. Off into his little cave or yeah. whatever the hell that little culvert his is. little in the door floor. down there. He, he also just he wants, shoot a hole in the wall. He, is what he did. He also just wants to be alone. So. <laughs> oh, <laughs> he shares like something. A nice hair piece, like Kirsten. Oh, Kirsten. oh, that's, oh great. that's a good idea. He his would love that. Costume. We should get he him would love that. Idea. Yeah. We should get him something. Yeah. At least yeah. for and a Halloween. duster too. A duster to go with. I don't yeah. think we find one that big. Yeah. He's a big guy. All right. So if you would like to. Uh, we would like it if you write to us because we want to know that you're listening and uh, what you think of what we're doing. You can get a hold of us on Facebook. Facebook.com slash Saturday Night Freak Show. Or Twitter. At Sat Freak Show. Or you can email us. 
Saturday Night Freak Show at Yahoo.com. I felt like you almost dropped the ball on that yeah. one. You were just no. like... There was, there was hesitation. Or, I was, I was, I was that the wine no, cooler was, I was talking? I was swallowing my wine cooler okay. because gotcha. I'm back in the 90s on this episode. <laughs> oh, and I am oh, throwing back some wine coolers. We all are. Blue wine cooler yeah, and green yeah. wine. There are no, there were no flavors in the nineties. No. There were colors. Green. No, no. Oh. just colors. This is pina colada. Have why is pina had, colada why is blue? blue? I don't know. <laughs> why is it blue? Have you never had grape drink? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's just what it was called back then. Orange drink. No, yeah, orange drink. There were no flavors. Oh yeah, just colors. Wow. <laughs> Uh, so so mail mail <laughs> that's where we're at mail here we go it actually is printed out in this day of no. electronic communication okay uh, no, so Derek Croston I hope I'm saying your name right Derek uh, says on Facebook that this is my favorite movie podcast it's like a book club discussion with movies yay yay, yay. yay. I love that I love yeah, book clubs book club <laughs> yes <laughs> Yeah. Hopefully we live up to that. Right. It's like, oh, and for next week, our book will be Escape from Cleveland. Well, you're going to find out at the end of this episode. Oh, yeah. we find out. And hopefully Sean is preparing his line now, but he has to remember who's Do I? Pick yeah, it it's is. not my pick, is it? So, okay. Uh, so I have no idea. That's the problem. I'll give you a cue. So okay, thank you. About Escape from L.A., All New Sucks says whoa right. it's by no means a good movie but it's very fun and very entertaining the cgi sucks as all cgi as does all cgi but the acting is well done i think it just boiled it down and our yeah, whole podcast is yes. just, <laughs> just a couple lines way to, go. way to go mr sucks thanks yep. way to go sucks uh about our episode cursed which we did two weeks ago wow. chris huddleston sea hud sea hud yeah. Writes in and says that Rick Baker's werewolf design looked much better than Can B's, which is in the movie. You did post the pictures. Mm-hmm. They looked uh, yeah. better. Yeah. I would have enjoyed yeah. that better. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, he says, put me in the Loves Werewolf movies camp. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> see uh, see Welcome aboard. Admittedly, there aren't many good ones, but I believe that in part is due to the dearth of movies in the subgenre compared to zombies, vampires, ghosts, etc. Do you think the difficulty in effectively creating a convincing looking creature is the reason we don't see more werewolf flicks? Yes, I agree. I think it, so. is, it is For much sure. harder to make a cool werewolf than it is to make a cool zombie. Right. Much harder. And if nothing else, to differentiate yourself from all the other werewolf movies that have come before. Mm-hmm. But you're you trying to create something unique. I do you think. need a different creature to do that? I think it's a it's a that Jekyll and Hyde thing. It's like how many permutations can you do right. on that story? It's like oh something's happening to me and my body's changing. Yeah. Ginger Snaps I thought was a good wrinkle yeah. on it. Awesome. You know, Ginger yep. Snaps good. But uh, like a lot of them, werewolf films are like it's the same thing. Dude gets bit. Dude's like oh my god, I'm turning into something that I can't control and I'm yeah. going to hurt the person that you know I love. It's like you know how many times can you do that? Can we do what the movie where the guy is it? like purposely hunting down? Werewolves because he wants to get bitten because he wants to be a werewolf. Is that like it's done? a fetish. It's, it's, some, it's something. It's like he just wants that power. Yeah. He just like it's wants like to be furries. a werewolf. <laughs> it's, like furries. it's just called it's just furry. furry. Like yeah. yeah, except the ending of the movie is he gets bit by a furry and then he just starts transforming yeah. into a giant chipmunk. Wait, yeah. this this could be a movie. This oh, yeah. could be a movie. We said it. We said it at a con. Copyright it. Copyright it. 2017 Saturday Night Freak Show. We said it at a con, and that's where the whole thing goes down. He's just having a good time, and then that's all of a sudden, perfect. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. That's perfect. <laughs> yeah. C2E2 this weekend. There we just go. shoot it now. Yep. <laughs> yep. Done. Thank your camera. Everyone take Monday off. <laughs> uh, Robin Lineman Silverberg says, that's I a have. Heck of a name. Robin. <laughs> Congratulations on your hyphenate name. Uh, <laughs> says, I hadn't thought about this in years. Now I have to the cursed. And now oh, I have wow. to go okay. back and watch this again with insomnia and all. Maybe this will let me sleep. Oh, there you go. It might put you if to sleep. If there's a movie that's going to knock you out, it might yeah. be cursed. It might put you to sleep. Yeah. I'm guessing that Robin did not like it the first time through. Yeah. So I'm getting not. off of that. I can't, imagine who, yeah. did, I can't imagine there are many people who did like it the first time through. If you did, you can write to us on Facebook. Facebook.com slash Saturday Night Freak Show. Okay. On Twitter. That's at Freak Show. <laughs> and by email. Saturday Night Freak Show at yeah, Yahoo.com. Sh- what we should do is probably do that up front yeah. and then again do, at the mailbag. But you yeah. messed your cue. <laughs> <clears throat> Sorry about that. It's Thank all you. my You're problem. all over I the place, I take responsibility. So now we're going to go through the final wrap-ups and we're going to begin with Colin. <laughs> what did you think of Escape from Los Angeles? Well, I thank you for asking me, Sean. You're welcome. Um, it's, like, oh, it's almost like a head <laughs> <laughs> Um, <clears throat> Yeah. So 
Well, I think, you know, where I'm coming from, I told you, I uh, love Escape from New York. One of the, my favorite <laughs> films of all time, I think. You do. Yeah. And so when I heard that they were making, finally, an Escape from L.A., like, were I you could excited? not, That's I could what, not yeah. contain myself. Yeah. Couldn't get, I was like, that was the thing. I think that I was most looking forward to. I mean, like I love that first one so much, right? That mm-hmm. it was like he's getting a but Carpenter's getting a budget, getting the gang back together, and they're gonna make a sequel to Escape from New York. And you get into the theater and they've got that hopped up version of the music comes mm-hmm. on, like, yeah, then eventually you settle into this kind of rhythm that like, oh, it's basically just a remake of the first movie, and then the CGI hits you, and then the performances, and it's just so campy, and you can feel the disappointment like creeping in. Heartbreak is the way I would describe my viewing of this movie in the theater, but it was kind of like one of denial, where you're still like, (laughs) but Snake Plissken's still a badass. Yeah. He is still a badass. And I'm thinking like that's when you guys are saying like this movie's very serious. It's because Snake Plissken's serious. He doesn't know he's in a comedy. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Maybe that's it. (laughs) There you go. That's true. Maybe that's it. That's kind of perfect. Yeah. And uh, doesn't know he's in a comedy. Okay, yeah, so it's like, that. does he escape with his deg- dignity intact? I don't know. There is the surfboarding scene where he high fives Henry Fonda before jumping onto the Henry Fonda, yes. or uh, Peter Fonda Peter before Fonda. Peter jumping Fonda. onto Henry the Fonda. trunk of uh, Fonda. Map to the Stars Eddie's <laughs> car. I can forgive him for that. <sighs> yeah, I don't know. It's a tough one. Uh, I did have fun watching it tonight, even though I was sitting there going like, "Come on!" Like that's stupid. <laughs> the, I mean, that's maybe the thing. It's Stupid in so many ways that I guess, you know, makes me wonder about like, you know, or it did make me wonder about the first movie. I'm like, is the first movie was written by the same people, Deborah Hill and John Carpenter and Nick Castle, sorry. Yes. Wrote the first one. Um, And, you know, like, am I holding that to a higher standard than than it should be? But there's something, you know, that. You know, it's one of those cases where the first movie works, I think, like on a level in spite of itself in a personal way. And I think a lot of you listening probably had the same experience with escape from New York. It may not be the best movie ever made, but it feels like it is in some ways. Uh, And then when you compare this one to it, it's like, Oh man, they're just making a mockery of everything that I loved about the first movie. It's like the people who made this movie, don't like Escape from New York or the things that they liked about the Escape from New York aren't the things that I liked about it and they just missed completely missed the mark except like I said Kurt Russell is Snake Plissken yep. yeah. even 15 years later yep. still got back into the headspace I mean you could say well what really is there to and the character he just basically stares and says like I don't give a fuck you know in but like hey. 16 different ways or 25 ways whatever how many, well, we like many words that. are where we like that yeah, um, so I had fun watching it tonight. I mean, like, there were parts of it toward the end. I'm like, well, eh, this is, like, entertaining in spite of itself. But I am going to say this is a bad movie. <laughs> One of the worst of Carpenter's career. Uh, I think it's his only sequel. It's the only sequel he directed. Yeah. And Carpenter uh, believes that this movie is ten times better than the original <laughs> film. Uh, in an interview, he said as much, and he's like, you know, give it time. This will take, you know, eventually it will, uh, you know, get its uh, its dues. You know, people will come around to it. But I'm like, fuck, it man, it tonight. I've seen I've other articles. Years. I was looking it up, and there are people like in defense of Escape from L.A. You know, there's articles on the you know, but you can find that contrarian. Sure, right? yeah. The people I mean, who like are, Halloween yeah. three. Yeah, exactly. Uh, do you, yep. Sean, how do you feel about Halloween three? I don't really Okay, know. all right. We have a whole podcast. Well, there's right. a whole podcast yeah. where it's like, it's just where Sean's too world is shattered. Just- now, do you think <clears throat> that John Carpenter enjoyed this one more because he got to fulfill some of his Western fantasies? Yes. Yes. Okay. This one, because yeah. w- I think this was more fun for him to make. And mm-hmm. I think for him personally, it was like, you know, look, this one's got 
more lights. This one's got, you know, that's very well lit, which is not mm-hmm. a good thing for the movie, you know, but it's like, look, well, we got more lights. That's like a Travis comment. It's like, how many lights we got? Turn them all off. <laughs> yeah, well, this I want to see everything. This one did it, you know. We got yeah, a problem? Throw some money at it. <laughs> yeah. He had the money to throw at his problems. Uh, unfortunately, he didn't have the money to throw at the, you know, the special effects house. Mm. But, uh, yeah, yeah, I don't know. It seems, it does seem self-indulgent. I think, you know, it's like either you're on its wavelength or in Los Angeles or you like bad movies and, you know, you get a big kick out of it. Uh, I just wanted to see more Snake Plissken. And so the fact that he's in it, you know, the the pure Snake Plissken before we get whatever the hell Rodriguez yeah. delivers is the uh, the pale imitation. Mm. Let's just say it right now. It doesn't matter how good it is. <laughs> uh, yeah, so I don't know. Tough one, huh? Yeah, it's a tough one because yeah. I'm like going like, but I shouldn't got recommend Snake this to in anybody. It. Yeah, yeah. I'm not going to recommend it. I, <laughs> go watch Escape from New York again. But I know you're going to watch Escape from L.A. anyway. You're, you're curious. So yeah, yeah. I'm going to say yeah. pass on Escape from L.A. There you go. Holly. That's forever, by the way. <laughs> you can never watch or experience this movie again. That's okay. Did you not know that? Uh, I have avoided <laughs> it for years. Uh, yeah. I had it on Laserdisc. So Laserdisc. He sold, sold it. it. <laughs> he sold it. I kind of, I kind of love how you describe that, that he doesn't know he's in a comedy. That's, yeah. Like it, it reminds me, it made me think of he's like Arnold Schwarzenegger in a Last Action Hero. Yeah, like he doesn't know that what what's around him is real. He doesn't know it's a comedy. That's totally what he, I thought. He doesn't of. know we, we're making fun of everything like, you've done for the last fifteen like, years. He's like he has no <laughs> recollection of this world whatsoever. Um, yeah, I, I had to agree this. This was so cheesy, so, so stupid and silly. And I loved every second of it. <laughs> it was so much fun. Like, the, the, I can't, we can't even, the special effects are just not, they're not, they're not. We can, they're not. Yeah, we can say that. They're just, they're not. They're not. <laughs> they're not. They barely exist. But it hits those 90s checklist points that we all love so much. And there's something about, like we've talked about it with other movies, we've talked about Demolition Man. There is a '90s cheese level that is so satisfying, and this hits that for me. Like I, I can't compare it to Escape from New York because I have not seen Escape from New York in so many years that I don't remember it. Um, so maybe that helps sway my opinion of this because I don't have that that reference to something that may be a better quality movie. You know, depending on uh, argument. But I thought this movie was so much fun. It's it's silly, but it's silly in, in all the right places. So I'd say definitely check out Escape from L.A. if you want a fun 90s movie to watch, for sure. It's it's not bad enough to say that it's not fun. So I gotta say, yeah, for sure, recommend. This is not the... I don't know where this one is going. <laughs> this is the one where I don't know where it's going. <laughs> this is not the worst movie I've ever watched, for sure. Like, Good. Yeah. Like, it is, like, I would say, overall, it is a competently made movie. Um, like, I th- with that, with those special effects? I, like, I, th- well, I think, yeah. I mean, but at the same time, like, you gotta take the time period into consideration mm-hmm. with that, you know? Um, but at the same time, it's very hard for me to believe the producers saw the dailies of that surfing scene and was like, this looks great. <laughs> like, you know, like. Jurassic Park but, was before this. Exactly. Jurassic Independence Park Day was, was the same this. year. Yeah. 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 What? Yeah. 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 Major... Think about that. Independence yeah. Day was the same yeah. year as this I did movie. not even, like, put that together. Yeah. I'm not even, like, Look comparing it to other. Look at the drastic yeah. difference. Yeah. I'm not even when thinking of that. When you take into consideration the year and the budget they had, there's no excuse for it. Like, right. But you that, know, but to me, that makes it even more hilarious that they're like, make it done. Like, this is it. You know, you hear about those movies, like we talked about with Monkey Shines, so like how like George Romero was like drinking like a bottle of vodka a day making that movie. Mm-hmm. And that's what he said. So it's probably more than that. Yeah. But like, it makes me wonder, like, John Carpenter, was there like a, is this like a rough patch in your life? Like, <laughs> you know, like, yeah, it was just like, here, but like, it this was a coke. Yeah. Movie. Like, yeah. Because like, <laughs> Like what we saw is the finished product. So how rough was like the dailies that they were watching? You know, I, I don't just know. Go, no, no, it'll be better. No, no, no. Yeah, exactly. we'll wait until we put the texture maps on. Yeah, yeah. Right. 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 This is a fix it and post movie. It's not campy and silly enough to be like a fun ride for me. It's like it's just short of that. It's. It, but at the same time, like you just love Kurt Russell so much, mm-hmm. so kind of, much you kind of like take points off of it being a bad movie because you love Kurt Russell so much. I but I try to 
think of it as like, what if that was Jeff Bridges? And I think if that was Jeff Bridges, this would be a fucking terrible movie that no one would ever want to remember. Yeah. And when I think of it in the scope of John Carpenter movies, it's definitely at the bottom. It's way at the bottom. Um, you know, but but I mean, that's that's a director that's had a lot of great hits over and over again. I just, I don't think there's anything in this movie you can't get from just watching the first one or from watching Demolition Man, you know? It's true. <laughs> God damn true. Demolition just, Man. Just watch Escape from New York or watch Demolition Man. I don't think this movie, like, you know really what? checks Demolition any of the boxes. Demolition Man does not have Snake Plissken. No, it doesn't. It it really doesn't. But then you just watch Escape from New York, which is the same story, you know? It's, it, it's too similar and it's too cheap to be worthwhile. <laughs> Um, I will say, however, this movie did give me my first cigarette craving in seven years. At the end of the movie, when he was lighting up that American spirit, the way he just, just like, like, the way he, like, enjoyed it looked like a genuine cigarette smoker enjoying a cigarette, so I was like... Don't you just love watching that? Yeah, because you can always tell when actors are, like, faking it, you know? Yeah. You're just like, oh, he enjoyed it. Or, like, the worst thing is, like... And it's Kurt Russell enjoying lighting it up? It's Mm -hmm. like, ah. And he's so great, like, you can't, like... Because you want to be Kurt Russell lighting up a cigarette. Like, Snake sure. Plissken is always a great character, no matter how bad the movie is around him. So, like, he makes up for a lot of the weak points of this movie. But, like, oh, man, have you ever seen a movie, though, where, like, they're clearly smoking fake cigarettes and it, like, just drives you crazy? Yeah. yeah. So oh, yeah. Tell. Like, yeah. that wasn't the case in this movie. And so, I, I wouldn't recommend it. Just say, watch this Keeper in New York or watch Demolition Man. Don't watch this movie. There's nothing new to get out of it other than the bad CGI. What about... <laughs> Well, there's no there's no surfing in Demolition Man. There's no surfing. In the first I I, I yeah. almost disagree. I don't need the surfing scene though. I almost disagree yes. with that wholeheartedly. That you can't. Right. That you can just go back and watch Escape from New York and get the same thing out of this movie. I don't think that is the case at all. I think there is comparatively. If, if oh, we're she just, just meant the good parts. I'm sorry. Yeah. Oh. I shouldn't have done this. Oh, if you want to go watch the boring parts of Escape from New York, go for it. If you want to watch something that is more colorful, yeah, more there's more uh, more out there character work in this movie. More, uh, first of all, there's like different there, in Escape from New York. It doesn't feel to me that there's more characters that kind of pop off the screen. It kind of feels like. I mean, maybe that's just me wanting what I want. I, I like that the the different characters that he meets along his adventure into L.A. are just different characters that pop off the screen, that offer different things, different tastes, if you will, as he's going through it. Mm-hmm. I like that about this movie. I like that we get the different areas of it. Um, it's it's hard. Like I said before, like if Kurt Russell and John Carpenter weren't attached to this movie, you'd never hear about this thing. This would be some way this would end up on, you know, Netflix um, at, at Mystery Science Theater, like just some bad movie that they bring up never again. But it does have those two on it. And for this movie, you you want to watch Snake Plissken, and you get him in this movie. Um, and again, we all know like there are bad parts of this movie. There are obviously bad parts of this movie. The CG is bad in this movie. <laughs> um, there's some other. I mean, it is a pre- it's an exact ripoff of the first one. There's a, a very uh, the same beats happen in this movie. Um, I won't deny that at all. But I have more fun watching this movie. And I'm trying to distance myself from nostalgia, and I think I can do that for this movie. If I can look at it objectively, even though I did watch this more as a kid, like, the the people he encounters in this movie seem more fun to me. And there's more going on, and yes, he does surf with Peter Fonda, but I like that, because it is ridiculous. It's absolutely ridiculous. But I like where he goes in this movie, and it's more fun to me. Like, I get... The more uh, I think, the more serious tone that Escape from New York has, um, and that's and that movie's perfectly fine. I don't dislike that movie; it's a perfectly fine movie. But if it came down to it, I think I would want my western, more explicit Snake Plissken in this movie, and that's why I would recommend this movie. I think you, there's there's just bigger characters in this movie. I think everybody gets the chance to go bigger. I think that was probably the purpose of this movie. You got. John Carpenter and Kurt Russell got the. I mean, they they wrote it together. They got the chance to make it kind of that character bigger than life, and maybe to the detriment of the overall movie, sure. But I think they had fun with it. I have fun watching that character be you know bigger than he was in the other ones, um, and that's why I recommend it. I like the characters in this, and I like the places they go. So I recommend Escape from L.A. I recommend it over Escape from New York. I like it better. Mm. 
<laughs> there it is. Well, if you agree with Sean, we hope that you'll or disagree with him. You'll write if in. You agree uh, on uh, you know one of our our social media channels. Which I'm not going to. We said them all. Yeah, okay. you should have heard them. <clears throat> it's not often we're split in half on our yeah, wrap ups. Yeah, yeah. I know. That's not true. Yeah, yeah. When was the last time? We are not I don't even know. Keeping is there a deciding vote? This, this is where Travis walks down the stairs. He's like, I have an opinion. <laughs> <laughs> Just he's sidles like, up for a half yeah. hour. Well, he'd be escaped from New York all the way. He I would be. Tell you yeah, right oh, yeah. No, he would be. I'd be uh, out <laughs> on my ass on that one. But yep. we're deadlocked. All right. So, yeah, deadlock. What does that mean? That means you can't watch that it. That means you. No, that means you have to watch it and make your own decision. That's where it comes down to listener, viewer, reader. <laughs> you must watch this blind person <laughs> blind person <laughs> brailing this show you, you must watch this movie and tell us what you think of it that's what's important we yes. want to hear from you. so uh, that means next week we're going to uh, watch a movie that's chosen by Holly me what are we watching we next week know, Sean. that's how he pointed I had no idea I, I do not keep track of the schedule I know it's okay uh well it's prom season guys so oh, we're no. gonna watch <laughs> oh no we're gonna watch my boyfriend's back from oh! 1993 <laughs> welcome to the 2017 it's just gonna be 90s all year I yeah. oh no I should add this begins my summer of 90s the summer of yeah. 90s yeah yep. don't worry listener I'm just gonna keep throwing I'm lobbing them in from all the yeah, decades yeah. Yeah. So, yeah all right so that's next week on the Saturday Night Freak Show and until then the basement is going dark.